All right, so we're having a Sunday afternoon gaming session with the Empire. A raid on the left flank of Tom's area of deployment. It's a real shame about the light here. That's the Empire lines up to there. When we uh, rolled for the terrain, we got a defended sort of trench fence line was rolled for. Here are the high elves on the right side of his flank. And just villages, terrain. He made me put down the windmill, which we got from a $2 shop. And some broken terrain and they'll be facing off against a whole horde of orcs and some reserve troops you've got trolls got wire dragon no uh, chariots commanders that's what the table looks like get some more lighting before long it's probably better from this side isn't it and catch you after the first turn first turn for the orcs everything fails except the artillery moves up a little bit and uh, the wolf riders move up just a first minute. empire turn means the artillery moves forward and the empire forms up in front of it uh, the Empire is moving into the castle and flagellants and crossbowmen with skirmishes around the side. Those guys have all jumped the defences. The knights are moving up the centre and the brigade on the, Tom's right flank is moving up as well. And then the general Fubars. Second orc turn, we had a bunch of blunders, but we also had one double one which moved this brigade into the woods these guys never made it to move these guys actually blundered um, my reserve which is uh, boys and black orcs but they amazingly got a six on their blunder and moved uh, to their full move the rest of the line is all moved up the heroes are positioned and the artillery is now going to check if it's able to fire Tom's amazing Dice rolling means the artillery has been brought to bear. This uh, huge brigade of uh, Imperial crossbowmen with skirmishes and halberdiers have closed off the pass. His commanders are up in the rear. These guys, Fubard, uh, over here, this uh, was a uh, blunder as well. Now here, they've sealed off this pass as well. And the cavalry actually managed a double move but decided to not take advantage of it. The infantry is generally moving up at different paces. The steam tank moved up to the center of the table and shot, caused to retreat and confused a unit of uh, goblin chariots. And uh, before I turned off the last um, orc turn, the lobbers shot the crossbowmen down here and killed a unit of uh, standard skirmishers. And that's uh, Tom's second turn. Right, a bit of action this turn. The uh, rock lobbers annihilated the steam tank and uh, taking advantage of their armor denial characteristic. The wolf riders sped up the center and engaged the halberdiers, destroyed their whole front rank through some amazing dice rolling. Actually managed to not lose a single stand because the halberdiers only got four hits on them and they got four sixes for their saves, which is awesome. And then uh, the, the second lot, uh, the knights, um, managed to not get confused. The halberdiers um, fell back and one unit was destroyed in the fallback and the wolf riders decided to pull out and basically align themselves so that they're just outside of the initiative range of the knights, so they're going to have to be ordered. And uh, over here, uh, the boar riders 
just moved up uh, enough to be able to be outside of the range of the artillery sitting on top of that hill and these are the Empire casualties so far so yeah third turn Empire versus Orcs and um, the elves leading uh, leading the game because in this game we've played an allied command where there is one general who is the uh, the high elf general and he commands all of the troops and uh, each of the heroes from the two sides can only command their own um, commanders their own their own troops and I actually thought we'd been forgetting but he only he only did it once with the knights he's at a minus one to order the allied troops ah yes, yes. Um, so from uh, from this turn on we'll assume that with a command of 10 he, he probably made his rolls anyway so it'll be Tom's first turn uh, third turn thought I'd make a quick interim video because there's a bit of uh, oh no roll away because there's a bit of firing going on this artillery is going to be firing on the cow on the uh, orc chariots damn it's so dark and um, also the crossbowmen have expanded to be able to fire as well and then over here the knights have got their act together and actually charged the goblins there's general movement on uh, Tom's right flank and here we've taken up position um, inside the castle and we'll see uh, we'll see what it's like at the end of this turn all right while well, the Muppets are running in the background we've got this is all that's left of uh, the wolf riders and uh, the Imperial Knights they charged in and after some abysmal um, armor saves on Tom's behalf um, this dude is all that stands of the proud Knights um, over here we had an out of range Right, well, we were interrupted there for a second. And uh, what happened was that this unit of trolls managed to uh, take out the flagellants and be within 20 centimeters to advance into the crossbowmen who used to live on that hill. Managed to destroy them with uh, their ability to regenerate a hit every round of combat and uh, armor save of five plus. They then uh, looked down the hill and saw that there used to be two units, three units of halberdiers there with a commander as well who joined when uh, he was overrun. And they ran down the hill and basically copped them in the side and uh, took out most of the Empire Center. Over here, the Boar Boys copped a bit of a flogging from uh, the lined up crossbowmen, which brought him outside of uh, initiative range. The artillery forgot to fire and um, I think that's all that happened last turn yes one dead commander a whole bunch of dead imperial guys and uh, on this flank check that commander I think he's gorgeous little guy sitting up there with his reading his book and whatnot so yeah these guys at the moment are the star of the show this is going to be one of the thorns in my side I can tell there with their castle. Over here the generals decided to get out of harm's way and bring a bit of support hopefully to uh, be able to bring the cavalry into combat and um, starting to be a little bit concerned about the rock lobber because there's a lot of stuff over there looking pretty darned mean. Let's see orc lines. We'll see how this fourth fifth orc turn goes. So, this itsy bitsy little geezer has just pulled off one hell of a stunt. He moved himself up into position during the movement phase and fired a spell called, uh, where is it? Gotcha. No? Anyway, whatever the spell was called, it's a 5 plus and it caused 
no hit, no hits on this unit. It caused no hits on the uh, uh, one hit on the unit next to it, yeah. and no hits on the unit behind it, gotcha. and nothing on the unit after. Um, there are three normal shooting attacks, and it caused a unit that's now gone to these two units to retire. One unit died falling into the terrain. So the short of it is that that little geezer has just destroyed a unit of um, archers. So that's pretty amazing. And I've made sure that I've kept him within 30. So should he be attacked, he can fall back to the giant, who is preponderously large. And now we're gonna see what's gonna happen down here, where we've charged the flank and the center. And also the Boer Riders amazingly managed to get some command off and surround the Halberdiers. So, not looking all too good, but I'm sure that the, em the Proud Empire troops will be able to hold their own. And at the end of the turn, we have quite a few Orc stands left. Unfortunately, there's nothing left of the Empire. However, as Tom pointed out, we're now in range of his cannon. And um, these guys are just going to sit there and cop it, I guess. And nothing else has happened anywhere else in the, uh, the field. These guys are still holding the castle, heavily garrisoned. And we'll just do a tally now of where the Empire is sitting, because that may force them to break. Alright, so our dragon here failed his command and caused uh, this unit of uh, archers to blunder and fall away from the nearest enemy unit, causing everybody behind him to make way. So the elves are looking a bit scattered at the moment, however these guys did make it up and are now going to be pounding the shit out of this dragon, um, giant. In fact, do you want to try and cast that spell again? The wizard player? Yeah. The wizard, player. wizard should be within, uh, I think it's 30 for the range. Should be our Heaven's 4 plus. Fire. 30 centimeters. So we'll get to that unit easily, but it won't get to that one. Alright, we'll try it. It's a 5 or 4? A 4 plus. 4 plus, yep. Yeah. And you've just right. doubled your uh, shooting attacks. So it'll make that it unit, 2, 4, 6, just 7, 8. Eight dice out of three. No, I won't be here. Six. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's another three for that unit there. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Go for it. Well, I'm actually a bit concerned that these guys might be out. No. Nah, they're well in. All right. Four plus. Oh. Wow. Four oh, hits. Oh no, threes for elves. Yeah. So five hits, five saves on five, means that you've just carved, he's just copped four hits, which means that he's badly wounded. And he also retires by 4d6, which means 6, 18, 19 centimeters. Um, he doesn't, he only retires to as far as there, and then he's confused. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna confuse him. Right. That's your shooting done? I think that's, that's the end of your turn. Yeah, that's it.